Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube. And you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people. So big up to a sub by the name of JG who put me up on this story right here. Big up to you, JG. Thanks for the email. And this story is about a young woman in the state of Louisiana by the name of Janora Guillory. Okay, so Janora Guillory is from Louisiana, and she's a, a black woman. And Janora Guillory was known as a nice, kind-hearted woman, and she lived in this town called Clinton, Clinton, Louisiana. I don't know if any of the subs are from Clinton or from the area. I'm not. You might know more about this town. Okay, so Janora was known as one of those people who was always happy. She was always smiling. She had great character. Nobody had anything negative to say about Janora. So Janora lived on a property alone, okay? And then she lived alone because her longtime boyfriend had passed away. So she lived on her property alone. She was also an animal lover. And she had 30 dogs that she kept in her kennel on her property. And she also loved horses. So Janora also had four horses as well. Now, in Janora's professional life, she was a specialist for an insurance company in Baton Rouge. And she drove to work every day from her home to her job, which this was a long distance drive. OK, now her co-workers also loved her very much. She was described as somebody who was a joy to be around all the time. She was just this great person. Everybody loved Janora, okay? Now, at Janora's house, right, she had some white neighbors who lived across from her. They lived across from her in a trailer, and their names were Johnny Hoyt and his wife, Lisa Hoyt, and then there was a guy named Phil Skipper and a 15-year-old kid named John Balio. Now, Johnny and Lisa Hoyt are brother and sisters. I'm sorry. Then that could, I'm sorry. They had a baby. Johnny and Lisa Hoyt had a baby together, okay? Now, Lisa Hoyt and Phil Skipper are brother and sister. They're brother and sister. Johnny Balio is just some 15-year-old white trash kid whose mother gave him to Phil Skipper. And Johnny Balio, he also became Phil Skipper's you know, kind of like they're living in, in Greece. You know, they, they were doing the Greek thing. You know, that was his little guy. That was his thing. That was his best man. That was his little buddy. So he was doing these things, as Johnny Balio said, against his will, okay? So this is a weird combination living in this house. These people are poor. They're hardcore white trash, Louisiana. Um, and the things that they're doing is not, is, is, I mean, it's very common for these poor white trash folks especially in places like Louisiana. These are damn near mountain men, you know? And they lived across from Janora Guillory, okay? Now, again, these people were low down white trash. I'm talking barefoot, plucking lice off their collar, dirty, barely any food or water. They didn't have a phone. And Janora, being the nice person she is, she noticed this. She felt bad for these poor white trash folks. And she, she decided that she would help them, okay? And she pretty much adopted these white people, not just helped them. You, they were like mountain man cracker poor, okay? And people, you need to understand this because a lot of us don't understand this. We're probably from some of the inner cities like Philadelphia, Detroit, you know, different places in New Jersey or New York and things like that. Or A lot of us don't understand. It's a difference from poor people where we're from and, and, and these people, these poor white trash people. Both poor, but it's not the same because these are the type of people who just live different. Like, for instance, somebody who's poor 
from the hood. They still take baths. They still go to the barber shop. They still wash dishes before they eat off of them. Things like that. You know, they still, you know, they don't have pets. You know, they don't do things with pets. It's not all right for us to do that. But the poor white trash is totally different because they don't have that foundational hygiene situation going on that poor black people have. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's just just totally different. So when we say poor, just don't think, oh, they're just all just poor. Yeah, they're poor. They probably have just as much money. They're poor. But poor and white is, is just a different smell, man. That's all I'm saying. OK, don't get it confused. Now, Janor, she helped these she helped these people, man. She helped these trailer people take care of her. I mean, of of of, of things that they had going on. She gave them money all the time. I mean, she was pretty much, they were like pretty much her adopted family. They're all grown, except there's a baby and there's a 15-year-old young man, and he's old enough to work, whatever. So what Janora did was she hired these people to take care of her dogs and horses and mow the grass while she was out working or she was busy. She also paid the female, Lisa, to clean up her house for her, okay? She paid for all kinds of things for these people, like birthday parties. She was just the best person ever. Unfortunately, it was for these, you know, poor white trash white folks, you know, coming from this black woman who which they could never appreciate that or appreciate her anyway. So. They didn't have a phone. And what Janora did was she felt so bad for them that she gave them the key to her house. So when she's at work, they could use her phone anytime that they needed it. Um, she also befriended them to the point where she gave them an opportunity to live a better life, to help their baby. She gave them money. She cared for them so much, y'all, that she wrote out an insurance. She named them as beneficiaries and a $25,000 insurance policy. That's how much Janora cared for these white trash folks right here. Okay? She listed them in an insurance policy. But the thing with this is they, pre they presented themselves to her as some needy white folks who were nice and they just needed an opportunity and a chance and they're poor and they're good and they just need, you know, a little assistance. But they actually hated her very much. They noticed from, you know, reports they hated her. They were hardcore white supremacists. They would go home if they would smile on her face. They would go home and just say very mean things about her, call her the N word, all kinds of racial slurs, you know. Because she was just being so nice that they just had to accept what she was giving to them. But they hated her very much. And you'll understand more why in a little bit. So the guy who lived over there with them, his name is Johnny Hoyt. He was a known thug. He was known to kill. He was very violent. He, was, he always used weapons. He has an extensive criminal history. And he was also the leader of a skinhead gang that he created called the Brotherhood. Now, this group... These people in this house, these four adults, they were so into doing bad things that they were grave robbers, meaning they would dig up coffins and steal jewelry and gold teeth off of bodies after they were buried. You know, they would keep the jewelry or they would pawn it. They would, you know, snatch the finger off if they had to. They would, you know, rip the mouth out, take the gold teeth. And they have been known to even execute people, burn corpses. They were just cold hearted thugs, all of them, including the girl. So what happened was. This guy, Philip Skipper and John Balio, they were original members of this so-called gang that this dude started, this skinhead gang. Now, Philip Skipper, he was already allegedly. No, he was because the boys said it and they admitted to it. He was already sexually assaulting this boy, Balio. Again, this boy, John Balio, was just white trash and his mom gave him to Phil Skipper. It probably was a money deal. Who knows for whatever he what he was doing with him. They was doing the Greek thing or whatever. So. They said that they, they, they needed to have an initiation to their gang. So this guy, Johnny Hoyt, right? This guy, Johnny Hoyt, he's the leader of the gang. He tells this 15-year-old boy, Johnny Balio, that in order to be with this skinhead gang, he needs to kill a N-word. So they decided that the N-word that they were going to take out were their, was their nice, loving, sharing black neighbor, Janora Guillory. Horrible. So remember also... She had made them beneficiaries in a $25,000 life insurance policy. And to these, you know, white trashery people, that's a lot of money. So they figured, you know, we'll do our duty as white supremacists and take her out. And then we'll also get paid for it because we're going to reap the benefits of this insurance policy that she named us as beneficiaries on. 
So these pale savages, they have it all mapped out. So on Monday, June 26th of the year 2000, right, they decided they're going to go over to Janora's place. This guy named Philip Skipper, he has a bat. John Hoyt has a knife, and Lisa Skipper has a 22 pistol. And the 15-year-old, he's just coming along also, okay? So at around 2.30 in the morning, they walked across the street to her house barefoot. And the reason why they went over there barefoot is because they wanted to make sure that they didn't leave any shoe prints, okay? So what they did is they said, Lisa Skipper is going to knock on the door because if a woman knocks on the door, it would appear non-threatening and normal for a female to knock on her door at about 2 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. So when she knocked on the door, Lisa told Janora that she needed money to get pampers. And of course, Janora being this nice, generous person, she says, OK. After she says, OK, she turns around to get the money to go give Lisa for these pampers. But as soon as she turned around, John Hoyt smashed her in the head with a bat. Boom. Hit her in the head with a bat. Right. After he hit Janora in the head with the bat, she didn't go down. OK. She got hit. She's probably in shock. She ran through the house. She ran down the hall screaming for them to leave her alone. Then what she did was she tried to run into the kitchen to grab a knife to defend herself. But when she goes to this kitchen to grab this knife, she has a hand on, her, on this knife, but she couldn't hold on to the knife, yo. They overwhelmed Janora, and then Janora ran into her bedroom. So when she ran into the bedroom, they followed her in here. They followed her into her bedroom. And when they got her in the bedroom, they boxed her in, cornered her up. They took turns stabbing her. They stabbing her like crazy. Now they pull out the 22. Lisa pulls out the 22, so she starts shooting her. And they're beating her with a bat. Now, at this time, Janora's still alive and fighting because she's fighting for her life. She's fighting as hard as she could. So as she's fighting, they start to get a little bit more creative. They grab the ceramic lamp and smash her in the head with it continuously. And then they hit her with the final blow in the head with the bat, which took all the life out of Janora. They finished her off. But peoples, they were not done yet. Janora, she stopped breathing. She's, she's done, but they're not done yet. After Janora stopped breathing, this is what the reports say, y'all. This is what the reports say. This group took turns R-wording her. They took turns R-wording her. They were not charged with this because the witness who was there, which was the 15-year-old boy, he said that them guys used a condom. So they couldn't prove they didn't have their DNA. But they took turns R wording her. Okay? Now, as they're doing this to her, this man's wife, Lisa, she's watching her husband and her brother, because this dude is her brother, taking turns on their once generous neighbor, Janora. While she's no longer alive, they're doing this. These are savages. These are different kind of people. You have a different mindset. You, you got to really take yourself into the craziest thing that you could think of and understand and know it's people out there that really do this stuff. These are savage. These are knuckle dragging beast savages. The one guy that's R wording her by the name of Phil Skipper, right, whose sister is there and his sister is married to the other dude, John, right? So Phil. They say that he even bragged that he paid a black man to put a semen specimen in a cup. He paid a black man to put a semen specimen in a cup one time. And he took this cup, this specimen, and he bragged about putting it in Janora so that he could confuse the cops. This is what these savages are doing, y'all. So after they did all this tour, this, this female, Lisa, she, she was busting her gun. She was shooting a numerous time. She watches her brother and her husband do this. They grabbed as much jewelry as they could, got out the house, went home, and got drunk and high. Went back across the, 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 uh, the, the road, whatever the road, the little pebble stone road that they have, whatever, dirt road. They went across and got drunk and high. After this is done to her, the police are investigating this murder, okay? They want to know what happened. 
because her co-workers realized that she didn't show up for work, which was something very odd. They got suspicious. They called. Boom. Police went over there. They like something is going on. Now, initially, the person that they had for doing this to Janora was a cop, was a was a local cop. Right. And they thought this police officer had did this to her because she had reported that she went out on a date with this dude and this dude was stalking her. Right. He's stalking her. He's showing up to her house. He's showing up to her job. He's startling her while she's out working with her horses. This dude was just kind of like an nuisance stalker. He's running down on her. She's like, she cut him off after the first date because she said that this dude kept on putting his hands on her. So they found out about this dude and they initially brought this dude in for questioning. They said that he's the one that did it. They went to his house. They went everywhere. They got the DNA. They said, boom, it's not him. It's not him. This case right here went cold for a whole year. It went cold for a whole year. After they did this to, right, these white savages who live across from her, after they did this to Janora Gilroy, right, her family had to come and clean up her house. Guess what they did? They paid the same people who did this to her to clean her house. Because they came over there, you know, acting white and innocent as if no, it's no big deal. Who knows what kind of mindset her family has. They should have been looking at them kind of shady and funny like, yo, what's up? Did she know? Yeah. But I don't know what their issue is. I don't know how they feel about white people or their relationship with them or if they look at them as gods or not. I don't know. But they didn't suspect that these people did it. These dirty, disgusting, white, trashy bums. I would have suspected that, yo. I think a lot of us probably would have. Like, yo, no, we watching you too. They paid, her family paid these people to clean her house. So there you go. Now they can make the crime scene even more clean. They did. All, they went in there and did all this work. They go back and get paid to clean it up. Right? So here's another kicker. These devils were even pallbearers at her funeral. People, after this happened and they solved this thing, they, they remember Lisa being there with the baby and they remember these white savages even being pallbearers at her funeral. That's how cold they were. And yes, this group did get the $25,000 payout that she made them a beneficiary to on her insurance. This is crazy. Long story short, y'all, these four people were caught. The 15-year-old named John Balio eventually did tell on everybody because they connected something where somebody from another place knew them and he came into, a, he was born in another county. He snitched, he said, I know somebody. It, it was all that stuff. Long story short, they got caught. The first person that they brought in, and this was over a year later, y'all, by the way. This case went cold. The first person that they brought in was this 15-year-old John Balio, and he told on all of them, of course, he claimed victim as well because the one dude, Philip, was had him since he was young. And he was, you know, doing the Greek thing with him. You know, the, the, the mountain man thing, you know, the, the, the swastika type thing. You know, these people, these dudes is into that stuff. All these white supremacist groups and the, a lot of these dudes be really into that. They really be doing this to each other. You know what I'm saying? So this 15 year old. He acted like a victim. You know, he, he agreed to plead guilty to second degree murder in exchange for cooperating. And he was given juvenile life, which was only until the age of 21. I don't agree with that. This boy getting out at 21 when he was partaking in these things. I think he was old enough to run away. Um, I think he should have got a lot more time. Now, the one dude named Skipper Hoyt. Right. Also took a plea deal and was sentenced to. 25 years behind bars. I'm sorry. Wrong. Lisa Skipper Hoyt. She's the wife. This is her brother who was doing this to this dude, Balio, when he was 15. She's the chick who was busting her gun and doing all this other stuff. She took a plea deal and she was sentenced to 25 years. I don't think that's long enough either because she's too young going in. These people were under 30. She's going to get out. I, I think she should have got, you know, executed or life. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Now, the other dude, Philip, right? Skipper and the dude, John Hoyt, the other two, they took their cases to trial and they both were found guilty of second degree murder. 
Philip was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And John was given 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. That's not enough time. 25 years for this is not enough time because he's going to get out before the age of 60. Uh, totally wrong. I think they all should have been lynched, firing squad, or at least life without the possibility of parole. All of them. Maybe the 15 year old, I would have gave him 70 years or something like that. You know, I don't know. But I think they made out pretty well with the time. Only one of them got life without the possibility of parole, and this was Philip. That's crazy. Nah, man. But anyway, Philip Skipper, he got 25 years without the possibility of parole. But the other one, who was the ringleader, he got he got 25 years without the possibility of parole. But Philip got life. Okay, so two of the two of the grown white men, one of them got 25 years without the possibility of parole, and the other one got life. That ain't enough time, and they both should have got life. Well, anyway, peoples, there you go. This is the story, man, of a nice black woman who decided to help these white folks, these knuckle dragon savages, beasts, and they took her out brutally. I don't know what kind of mindset Janora Guillory had in this disgustingly racist state of Louisiana. I mean, I think that a black a black woman at the age of 42, she should have known more about racism, white trash, mountain men and these savages who living in trailers and all that stuff and poor walking around barefoot eating animals and all the others, eating dogs and stuff. I think she should have known a little more. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that she was delusional? Do, what do y'all think about Janora doing all this stuff for these white people? Was this a nice thing that she was doing? I mean, get in the comments. Let me know. I just think that any black person, especially living in Louisiana, should have been a little more conscious and aware why wasn't she? And her family didn't even question these people when they came. You know, they paid these people to help clean up the mess that they caused in taking out their loved one and even let these people be pallbearers at the funeral. And again, Janora, she named these people on her insurance policy for them. Why? Get in the comments. Let me know what, what you, if you would have watched out for these people. What would it have looked like to you? To me, man, that's a red flag. White trashery is a red flag for me anyway. You know, I'm throwing the antennas up. You know, what do you think about these neighbors? How much time should they have gotten for this? What do you think about this 15-year-old only getting it, uh, getting juvenile life, which he gets out when he's 21? What do you think about Janora Gilroy and her mindset helping these people like this, man? What do y'all think about her? All right, y'all, easy. <laughs>